Hello Simmers and welcome to the southern part of the Netherlands where we are at Gilserijen Air Force Base or Echo Hotel Golf Romeo. The home base of the Dutch Defense uh, Helicopter Command. And we are here to take a closer look at the X-Trident CH-47 Chinook. Which is a brilliant transport helicopter. The real workhorse for the uh, Dutch Air Mobile. Air Mobile Brigade. It belongs to the Dutch uh, of the Royal Netherlands Air Force. We also we are in the Royal Netherlands Air Force library. Um, this is not included uh, in the purchase, but you can download it for free from the uh, forums over at xplane.org. Now, if we take a closer look at the uh, 3D model, you can see that the uh, helicopter is modeled very, very nicely. And a big disclaimer, I'm not a real-world helicopter pilot, I'm not even an experienced sim helicopter pilot, I basically suck at flying helicopters, so this is by no means a tutorial on how to accurately fly and operate this machine. This is purely a review uh, to show you what you get when you buy this, uh, this beautiful add-on. I bought it a couple of months ago for x 11. A couple of weeks ago I received an email from the .org store uh, that X-Trident released an update making uh, this beautiful helicopter compatible with X-Plane 12. So we are now in X-Plane 12 with the uh, Ortho 4XP Zoom Level 17 uh, tiles as well as the uh, X-World Europe uh, uh, Autogen uh, scenery. All the other stuff is default X-Plane 12. So this airbase, this, uh, this scenery for this base, it's default X-Plane. And the weather injection that is Active Sky XP12. But anyway, we are here for the X Trident Chinook. As you can see, a beautifully modeled helicopter. And when you buy this package, uh, there is a number of options that you can uh, apply on this helicopter. So if you go to the top menu bar and you go to the CH47D uh, Chinook and you go to the options section and you select one of these options, you get a pop up. And in that pop-up you can uh, change certain settings. There's a rotor demo that you can switch on or off. And if you switch it on, the uh, rotor blades will move in slow motion. Uh, and that enables you to study the movement of the blades and see what the effect of certain control inputs is on the rotor blades. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I will demonstrate that uh, once we have this uh, thing up and running. There's a number of other options that you can set uh, in terms of the controls. Uh, if you go to the lights, you can switch on or off uh, a number of lights. Well, I usually do that from within the fly deck and we'll jump in there uh, in a minute. Um, but you can also do that from this menu, uh, should you want uh, to. Same uh, applies for the exterior lights. Uh, again, I usually do that from within the fly deck, but at least you have the option uh, the choice to do that from the menu if you don't want to uh, jump into all the switches. For setup, uh, this is merely a hardware control uh, panel. Uh, here you can set the pitch null zone and the response curves for pitch roll and yaw. You can set up the, uh, the collective. Uh, so this is quite handy uh, if, you, uh, if you start using this add-on. Um, to uh, basically fine-tune your uh, hardware controls with this add-on. Then there is uh, a panel or a section where you can operate uh, the doors. Uh, some of these are animated on the helicopter. So for instance, the right door is in here. You can open or close the top part, as you can see. Also the bottom part. And the same applies to the rear ramp. So if you move down there, you can see that it first opens the upper half and when you continue to slide to the right, it will just lower the ramp. There's a hatch in the floor that you can operate and there is a number of windows. So there's the pilot window. Now in a helicopter, the pilot or the commander is in the right hand seat, contrary to a fixed wing airplane where the captain is always in the left-hand seat. In a helicopter, that's the right-hand seat. So the pilot window is this little window uh, up here. You can open or close that. Let me just zoom in. And 
And the same applies to the co-pilot window. And then there's a removable window that's here on the left uh, hand side of the fuselage. So you can open and close that if you like to. Then we have a fuel hatch that is on the right hand side of the helicopter in here. So if you open that, you can take a look at the panel, but nothing of this is modeled. Uh, so you cannot operate this refuel panel, but the, uh, you can open and close the door that will make the panel visible, which I think in itself is pretty nice. Then there are some uh, miscellaneous or MISC uh, options. So there's uh, oxygen. You can switch on and off the remove before flight. And there's also remove before flight extra, which is uh, handy if you operate in Arctic conditions. It will seal off the top of the rotor blades. But there's no need for that uh, here in the Netherlands uh, today. It's a beautiful day. It's about uh, 14 degrees Celsius, so no risk of icing or snow or whatever. And there's also the uh, ability to change the, uh, the rear part of the helicopter. If you take a look inside, right now the seats are normal. If you move the slider to the left, you can fold them or remove them completely, whatever you like. I usually leave them like this. And then there's a, a number of uh, variants that you can choose. So again, for Arctic condition, you might want to use skids if you have to land in snow. Um, there's a number of options concerning the hook. There's one main hook, or you can do a forward and aft hook. I leave it to this because I think in real life, this helicopter has a forward and after uh, hook with the Royal Netherlands Air Force. You can apply or remove a hoist above the door. And you can choose if you want single or double bubble windows. If you use Reality XP, you can check this one. And you can also uh, choose to, um, to display a load assistant and a landing assistant, should you want to. I usually don't use those. But they are there at least. Then there's some flight assistants. They can walk up. So all in all, there's quite a lot of uh, features uh, or settings that you can use with this uh, add-on. If you go to the loads, oh, let me just first open the rear ramp door again. If you go to the loads, there's a number of objects that you can actually transport with this uh, helicopter, which is really fun. Uh, you have Blivets, a helicopter, a Humphy, an M777 uh, artillery gun, a Rubik's Cube or logs of wood. Now, if you, uh, for instance, if I want to uh, transport uh, an artillery uh, piece, I can click it. And if I want to um, pick it up with the helicopter, I have to hover above it, I can select it, then you get these two assistants. You have to uh, make sure that the hooks of the helicopter are attached, and then you can uh, fly away with that uh, artillery piece below your helicopter. Uh, you can do that with auto connect, easy, default, or hard. I usually switch uh, it off. Uh, you can also select connect immediately, then it will just uh, put it below the helicopter without uh, putting you through the hassle of uh, hovering above it. You can adjust the cable length. Uh, you can also, and this is pretty cool, you can also press fly to. Um, if you do that, this artillery piece will be placed somewhere in uh, the world. You will be given a couple of uh, latitude, longitude coordinates. You have to fly there, then you pick it up and you bring it to wherever you want to. Uh, to put it, which I think is really cool. It's a nice feature. It enables you to fly sort of a mission with this uh, helicopter. So that's a really nice uh, touch, if you ask me. But anyway, this is now uh, released. Let me just press delete. So then it's gone. You can also save certain situations. Now for fuel, we can switch the fuel truck on to show. Let me just change the fuel again 
Uh, you can also set manual drive, you can set self drive, or you can just put it into position straight away. And then you get this uh, huge fuel truck next to your helicopter. And if you start to refuel, you will actually see a fuel line from this uh, truck to the helicopter. You're off, connect, and you can actually refuel it. So let's say we put uh, 5,000 pounds in it, or refuel until we reach 5,000 pounds. But a really nice uh, touch, it really, well, it, it gives some immersion to uh, all the operations that uh, concern flying a helicopter and all the features that an helicopter can be used for. So I think it's uh, pretty nice and it makes the add-on a lot more versatile. You can just take off, fly around, do nothing. You can try to make a mission by putting some uh, cargo somewhere in the map and fly to that, uh, hover above it, pick it up and deliver it somewhere else so yeah i really like it so let's just say that we have plenty of fuel right now and that the fuel truck can be dismissed and then there's the sound sections where you can adjust some uh, sound volume so with the helicopter which i think uh, although the um, the menu is pretty basic and it would be nice if this part could be transparent for a bit uh, maybe but it's functional, it's really functional and it has uh, a lot of nice features uh, put inside of this. So the next step will be to jump into the flight deck and take a look at what we have there. So welcome to the flight deck of the Chinook helicopter. It's a bit old fashioned, lots of uh, steam gauges. I know that in real life the Royal Netherlands Air Force has more of a glass cockpit uh, interior for its uh, Chinooks. So this is not entirely realistic, but the, um, like I said, the livery was uh, downloaded from the store over Dexplain.org. And, well, I guess the, uh, the earlier versions of the Chinook, they looked like this. I have no idea. I've never been in one uh, at all. So I can only rely on pictures, but uh, I can imagine that the, uh, especially the earlier models, they were fitted with a fly deck like this. More modern ones, you will find uh, glass cockpits uh, as well. But as you can see, everything is created and modeled beautifully in 3D. All the switches, everything can be touched and operated, it works. So that is a really beautiful fly deck and whatever changes you make in the back will be visible from within the fly deck. So that's also really, really, really nice. So in terms of the visuals, the graphics, I think this uh, add-on is pretty nice. You can choose whether to display or hide the uh, the pilots and models. So if you don't want them, you can go to the uh, options menu, uh, go to MISC and you can say, well, I don't want to see a co-pilot or a pilot. And then you have just empty seats. Enhanced visibility, but of course in real life when you operate it, there will be a person uh, sitting uh, in your line of sight. So I usually leave them on. This uh, package ships with some documentation. Uh, if we go to the um, X-Plane 12 main folder, then to aircraft CH-47 V2, documents, there is a checklist, which covers everything from cockpit preparation to engine shutdown again in uh, 10 pages. And you can just run through this. Uh, I haven't uh, studied this in depth yet, but it is uh, pretty cool that they uh, that they have included this and you might want to email this to yourself so you can open it on uh, for instance a smartphone or a tablet that you can have next to your uh, uh, your your uh, your monitor i use two monitors so i usually if i want to use uh, stuff like this i'll put it on the second monitor so it's always there uh, ready to be inspected or uh, well if, if you need it you can look at it immediately the other one is a user's manual 
And this is 76 pages of description of systems. A lot is uh, covered, uh, cockpit and instruments, internal external lighting, instruments, navigation system, communication system, self-defense system, environmental controls, the flight controls, hydraulics, engines, fuel, APU, electrics, landing gear and steering, doors and brakes, cargo hooks, hoist, troop warning and some plugins, charts and parachute drop and weapons. So a lot is described, it's 73 pages, I haven't read them all. But uh, know that uh, there is uh, documentation uh, included in the purchase when you buy this add-on. Uh, and it goes through uh, all the available knobs, switches and systems quite extensively. So it's really worth to, uh, to read uh, through this. Um, I still have to do that. I think there's a lot of features uh, hidden that I haven't... Uh, uh, figured out myself, so there's still a journey for me to uh, to get to know this uh, add-on and all these systems a little bit better. But know that it is there and that you can use this to explore the uh, add-on even further. So the next step will be to uh, do a quick and dirty startup. I don't know any uh, official procedure, so I just rely on some uh, videos that I saw on YouTube, some stuff that I read. And I kind of uh, figured out uh, how to uh, get this uh, thing started, but I haven't got a clue how they do it in real life, what the actual values uh, have to be. So we'll just uh, start by doing that from, uh, from here. So in order to start up, we'll start at the overhead panel. Now I've adjusted some hotkeys to the fuse. Uh, as usual on the keyboard with the numpad, you can uh, adjust numpad numbers to certain fuse. And uh, so I've assign this one to uh, numpad 8 which is the overhead uh, and we'll start here by switching on the battery and having done that we can go back to our forward view go down here and we can check the caution lights and we'll see that they all work Having done that, we'll return to the overhead and we'll start the APU. So you move this switch down to run. And then when you get the index finger icon, press and hold it for a couple of seconds. And that will start the APU, as you can hear. Once the APU is started, you will get a green light coming up uh, somewhere in here. APU on. So that's good. And when the APU is on, we can also set the APU generator to the bus by this switch, moving this switch to the on position. We can also switch the position lights. Somehow this is not working. Why isn't this working? Let me just adjust a few. Right, there it is. So NVG, I think this is night vision goggles. Uh, I will not use them, it's set to norm. It might also be navigation, I'm not really sure, but what I always do is put it to bright. And we'll switch the top and bottom anti-collision lights on. So now if we look from the uh, exterior, we can see that the lights are on. Now we have to remove the remove before flight uh, stuff, so we'll jump back into the menu. Options, uh, MISC, remove before flight is switched off. And now we are good to go to start up the... Uh, Helicopter. So we'll go back to the overhead. We'll set the power crossover 1 and 2 switches to on. And having done that, we will set the main, aft and forward fuel control switches to on for the number 1 engine. That's the first one that we're going to start. And we move this handle to the ground position. Now I have assigned those handles to my thrust levers on the uh, Bravo throttle quadrant and I fly the helicopter with the TCA Airbus uh, joystick and I have assigned the uh, basically the thrust lever on the joystick to the uh, collective 
and the joystick itself to the side click and my rudder pedals to the anti-torque uh, pedals. But anyway, uh, so this is set to ground. We have the fuel pumps uh, running. We have the power crossover switches uh, on. And now we will start the uh, helicopter by moving the switch, the start switch, that is this one, to the one position. So you move this switch to the left. And once you do that, you will look at this panel and you'll check for the N1 to reach uh, roughly 15%. And you see the temperature rising and then you, will re then you can release the uh, starter. And that will uh, basically start the flow. So let's just put this one to the left. Look down. You can see N1 going through 10. Climbing up to 15, the temperature is rising, so now we can release. And let's just close these covers. I completely forgot to do the fire test to this model, by the way. But with N1 reaching uh, over 50%, temperature is still rising, but it stays in the green, until now at least. And N1 will stabilize at 60%, then the temperature will drop and then the, the N1 will continue to rise a little bit further. We can now see that the rotor blades are starting to spin. So time for us to start up engine number two. So same drill, aft and forward main fuel pumps on. Then the uh, handle to the ground position. The crossover switch was already on, so we'll select starter to number two and we'll check for the uh, N2 which is now over 10% climbing to 15 and to at 15% temperature rising so we can release the start button and we'll just monitor the startup of engine number two now again I'm not a real-world helicopter pilot. I don't know if this is the correct procedure, but at least it's a quick and dirty way to uh, start the uh, helicopter. And it uh, will give you the ability to start practicing flights. And flying a helicopter is a real challenge in a desktop simulator. Uh, I only use the mouse, but I think that you really need like Dolby Eye Tracker or Track IR to... Uh, or maybe even virtual reality to... Uh, to really master flying a helicopter in a desktop simulator. You really need that, uh, that quick ability to look around while you have two hands on the controls. It's quite hard to, to master it if you don't have that. We can see that engine one is stabilized and uh, N N1 for engine number one is stabilized. The temperature is stabilized and the N1 has climbed a bit further to about 66%. Uh, and we will see uh, number two engine uh, do the same thing right now. It starts to climb. And now I can um, increase these handles or these levers very slowly towards the uh, flight position, but not yet in the flight position entirely. Again, I have uh, assigned the axis for these uh, handles to my uh, Bravo throttle quadrant. And for your information, if you go to the joystick page, so that is throttle 1 and throttle 2. If you assign uh, the uh, lever that you like, if you assign throttle 1 and throttle 2 to those, then you have the uh, the physical uh, thrust levers assigned to the uh, to these levers in sim, and if you increase them, you will see that N1 continues to increase as well. There we are. So now we are at 80 percent, and at 80 percent, I usually switch the. Um, generate engine generators on don't know if this is necessary 
that you need 80%, but I saw it somewhere or I read it somewhere, so I just stick to it. And now we can switch off the APU uh, generator and also the APU master. With the engines running, we can also uh, switch the power crossovers one and two off. Flight controls have put them both. Leave it down there. And we can put the uh, windscreen and Python heat anti ice on. These are the search lights, we don't need them. The flood lights, we don't need them. The emergency exits can be set to armed. We don't need dome lights. Uh, dome lights. Uh, these lights were already on, and I don't know how you have to uh, configure the uh, fan doors for engine one and two. So if anyone who watches this video knows how to um, configure these switches, uh, I'm open for suggestions because I haven't got a clue. But uh, I might uh, just have to read the manual for that. In the meantime, I'll switch the aft and forward auxiliary fuel pumps always on. And with that, continue to increase the uh, levers for the last bit to the flight position. Always make sure to move these handles slowly. Don't just slam them forward. Give the uh, engine time to uh, react to the change. So slow movement on these handles. That's what I read at least. I don't know if it's true, but I read it somewhere. So having done that, we have this helicopter uh, started. And now what I always do is I put this system to both. That will get rid of the yellow warning lights for the uh, AFCS 1 and 2. And now that we have this helicopter started, what I always do is I'll switch this system to on. You can first go to a lamp test, then run a test, and then put it to MGRS. It will set not available and then to let long. That's the present position. That's because this switch is in the PP or present position uh, indication. So there's a number of position. There's wind, three knots, 77 uh, degrees. So north easterly wind. You can move this up. That's inoperable, but I usually put it to ground speed and track. You can also put it to present position. If you have a waypoint, uh, the distance bearing time will give you ETA distance and bearing uh, to that waypoint, waypoint targets for that route. So I usually just put it for VFR flights to glide uh, ground speed and track. And this is especially handy during taxi because then you can see how fast the uh, helicopter is moving on the ground. Now having done all this, um, let's just check real quick what the uh, Q&H is today. 1019. So we have to move this one slightly up. There we are. And also on the uh, co-pilot sides. So having done all this, now you have an engine RPM trim. I have. I don't know how to assign that yet. I have to figure that one out. Um, but with the uh, helicopter started, this system up and running. Next step is to release the parking brake, which is down here, and taxi to the runway uh, for takeoff. If you take a quick look, the wind 074 at eight. So the wind from the northwest. So we'll just uh, taxi, turn to the left, and then take off for a short uh, circle and land, just uh, to see how this uh, thing flies. So let's press the uh, toe brakes on the pedals to release the parking brake, and then we'll pull slightly up on the uh, collective. Now in here we have the uh, rotor RPM in the torque switch. 
and I use them a lot. Uh, I figured out that if you are roughly at 300 or 30 or 35 percent torque, that's uh, usually sufficient to get the helicopter moving on the ground. So just raise the collective. You will see the torque indicators starting to rise. And as soon as the helicopter starts moving, you're basically good to go. And again, on the let's just do a brake test. Uh, if I go to the joystick to my uh, Thrustmaster, I've assigned nose wheel tailor to the stick twist, and that allows me to uh, control the steering on the ground. And before we do that, we first have to set this switch to steer. And that will allow us to uh, control the helicopter while we are taxiing on the ground. As you can see, we are not going very fast, just one knot, so let's just... Increase torque slightly, gain some forward speeds, and let's make that left hand turn here. Let's turn right and taxi for the runway. Come on. So here we are. So elapse timer is on. Let's put in some collective and start flying away. We can switch the steering to off. Fly the 
this helicopter uh, in terms of the uh, instrument panel scan. The main focus is on vertical speed, forward speed, radio altimeter, torque, uh, and of course the uh, attitude indicator. What you are looking for is once you reach your desired altitude, to get a vertical speed of zero to maintain that altitude. Basically, a combination of adjusting with the cyclic as well as adjusting the collective. And I always go for small inputs on the collective and try to keep that uh, as stable as I can. I don't know if that's the correct procedure, but it works, sort of. Right now, we are heading straight for the uh, city of Tilburg. Let's make a left hand turn, a uh, right hand turn. And as soon as you start to make a turn, that vertical speed goes all over the place. So it's really key to keep a close eye on that vertical speed, adjust your uh, collective and your uh, cyclic to try to keep that uh, close to zero. Just shut up for a minute and uh, do a flyby so you can uh, listen to the sound uh, that comes with this uh, add-on. Circle around that and uh, make a right and turn to line us up with the uh, runway that's going to the north. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to descend a little bit already. Not too much. There's a really. I really have to start working on the. Um, sensitivity of the uh, collective because there is a small region where it's extremely sensitive if you go like a tenth of a millimeter over that it will just rocket up in the air so I still have to look at the uh, at the settings for that so now I want to turn to the right without gaining too much altitude so a little bit of cyclic to the nose down, not too much. A bit of right anti torque panel, pedal. There's the runway. Come down on that collective and try to keep the nose up to get rid of some forward speeds. somewhere over the runway and try to bring her down gently. So now I have to start to pull back on the cyclic. That will get rid of some of the uh, speeds, but it will also increase the rate of descent, so I'm going to increase my collective. Get more torque. Ooh. Those uh, helicopter land spots uh, down there. Let's see how we can manage. So slowly, slightly back on the collective because we don't want to gain too much altitude.
four helipads it will be, but I want to land in one of the helipads. First one right in front of us is my first choice. Let's go for a retry. Well, let's try it again. skills that you need to master, which is a very, very nice challenge. So let's just uh, go in there.
bring this uh, thing in sim is quite difficult. You need a lot of practice uh, to master it, uh, which I clearly haven't had yet. So let's just see if we can get this thing on the ground. So anyway, not entirely the position that I wanted to be in. I want to be with my nose into that direction, but at least we've made it in this uh, helipad, which is uh, quite of an accomplishment if you have my uh, helicopter flying skills in the first place. <laughs> so really, really nice uh, add-on, um, a nice challenge if you want to try something different from fixed-wing aircraft, and this is a beautiful add-on. I can highly recommend it, and, uh, well, if you buy it, I wish you a lot and lots of fun with it. You can have plenty of fun trying to master it. I have a couple of hours of flying experience on this thing, and I need a lot more, and I need to really start to uh, read that, uh, that documentation. But anyway, this is what you get when you buy the uh, X-Trident CH-47B Chinook. It's on... Uh, it's for sale on the uh, X-Plane.org store. And let me just check that real quick. It will set you back. Uh, let's see. How much my X Trident? Uh, Thirty-eight ninety-five. So thirty-nine dollars US, and you have this uh, add-on. Uh, and like I said, I can recommend it wholeheartedly. It's a lot of fun. It's versatile. Uh, and it will. Uh, you won't be disappointed. So that's it for this uh, video, if you have any tips, and I'm pretty sure if you're an experienced helicopter pilot you will have plenty of tips, please leave them in the comment section uh, below for me, I really want to learn uh, helicopters, I've been messing around with them, uh, or at least I was messing around with them a couple of months ago, then X-Plane 12 released and there were no... Uh, add-on helicopters for that in the first place and I've been really busy uh, at work and when I had time to uh, do something in the sim it was uh, always fixed wing airplane but now with the uh, X-Trident Chinook and also their Bell uh, helicopter uh, ready for X-Plane 12 uh, I will step back into the fly deck of uh, helicopters more often and I can wholeheartedly recommend you to do the same. That's it for this video, hope you liked it. Uh, as mentioned, if you have tips, tricks, comments, whatever, leave them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you all again another day on another video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.